Streaming now, this is the Wood TV Live Desk. Good afternoon, everyone. Phil Panarski here with the Wood TV Live Desk. Hope you're all having a great start to your Wednesday. And since it's Wednesday, as always, News 8 digital reporter Matt Jarowski joins us to talk about his latest Sunday story. And this one's a pretty big deal, a pretty interesting story as well. Matt, your story really revolves around a group of researchers from Central Michigan University who are working on creating a more efficient tuberculosis test. Can you just talk a little bit about uh, you know, just give a brief summary for those who maybe haven't gotten the chance to check out their story yet and just talk a little bit about what's going on there and also, you know, just really the key issue being that time frame between the tests we have now and the tests that CMU is working on. Right. So this is a, it's, it's a lot of work in the making. Um, earlier this month, uh, researchers at CMU published their study about a new testing method. Uh, to try to find tuberculosis. So tuberculosis isn't really a, a major deal here in the United States. Um, it's not really on our radar. But worldwide, especially in third world countries, TB is still a major problem. Uh, according to the World Health Organization, um, outside of COVID, TB is still like the largest in, uh, infective uh, disease, uh, mm -hmm. fatality-wise. And have roughly 1.5 million people each year die from tuberculosis. More than 10 million people contract an infection. So in, in certain parts of the world, this is a major deal. Now this new test uh, that's being worked on by these researchers at CMU, uh, ba basically they came up with an entirely new method. So currently, uh, tuberculosis, they use uh, tests, uh, culture tests, to try to uh, find uh, antibodies or these, these active TB bacteria. That can take weeks at a time, and mm -hmm. in those weeks, those doctors can lose its, its time as far as um, where to act, when to act, and what to do. These new tests uh, can give you results in as little as 24 hours. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned just, you know, it may not be a big deal for us here in the United States, but mm -hmm. worldwide it is still a pretty significant infection, and just kind of talking about, you know, going from not knowing whether you have it or really what to do for weeks, and then changing it into just a couple of hours could be huge. Could you just go into a little bit about that impact and just how important that really is? Right. I mean, that's one of the, when I talked to you, his name is Dr. Ben Sports. Uh, he leads he leads the lab up there at CMU. Um, that was one of the main drivers to those high fatality numbers is because it takes so long for doctors to understand and know the, the path that they need to take mm -hmm. or whether they have an active infection to prevent that from spreading. Um, so that's one of the key issues. The other one is that we're seeing uh, more cases of tuberculosis that are drug resistant. Um, so the more that those are able to spread, the more difficult that's going to be able to treat. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, and uh, one of the things, you know, we were mentioning a little bit before we went live was just, uh, you know, just the time that it's taken a lot of these researchers to even get this far so far in the process. Can you just mm -hmm. go into a little bit about that and uh, what Dr. Schwartz has been working on over the past decade, it seems like? Yeah, that was one of the things that really stuck out to me in our interview is this course of study, what he's trying to do, uh, has been more than a decade in the making. It predates his time even at CMU. Mm -hmm. He's working on this for one of 10 years now. So to get to this next step where they can... Uh, can you know, consciously show that this testing method works. Um, it just shows you how much hard work, how much funding um, really goes in to making these medical advances. Mm -hmm. Right. And, you know, just taking a look now, you mentioned the tests have our preliminary tests are already still kind of underway and they are showing promising mm -hmm. signs. But what is sort of the next steps and potentially getting these out there and really making them more mainstream and helping right. out as many people as possible? Right, there's still a long way to go. Uh, the testing method they've done so far is they've kind of just used lab cases. Uh, strains that are kind of pretty straightforward. Um, Swartz says that the, the next step is to kind of try to field test it in a way, mm -hmm. um, looking at like actual you know live cases of TBB, um, which are much more complicated. Um, so it will kind of be ready to be seen if these tests still work. Um, however, the basis of the test does seem to indicate that this stuff will translate to the field. Mm -hmm. And just kind of wrapping up, Matt, you know, we do appreciate you coming on the live desk. But as always with these things, you know, I'm always intrigued uh, as somebody who is 
reading your own story and then getting to talk to you about it, what was sort of your biggest takeaway from this or one of the things that is going to stick out to you the most from reporting on this? You mentioned just the amount of research that Dr. Yeah. Schwartz has spent on this. Is there anything else or is that really the one thing that you are always going to remember? That is the, that's for sure the number one takeaway. Um, I, I remember walking away from the interview uh, happy to see that mm -hmm. CMU isn't just laser focused on things that are impacting our community here in Michigan. Um, but but worldwide, and, and just the amount of time and dedication that these projects really take, you know, s sometimes it almost seems like we take for granted uh, the <laughs> giant leaps and bounds that we've made, not just in the medical field, but technology and all mm -hmm. these other things. Uh, this kind of shows how much work and time and energy goes into those projects. Um, and I was even mentioning this before we were talking, there was a story I did uh, out of the Van Andel Institute a couple weeks ago where mm -hmm. A man working on this project, he'd been working on it for almost 20 years. I mean, that's like a major part of your career, dedicated to one simple thing, tackling one simple problem, mm -hmm. um, and, and completely uh, solving it. Right, absolutely. And I do want to recommend everybody checking out the story. It is a huge uh, deal, obviously, of what we've been talking about, and it is uh, set to be a story that we're going to be keeping a close eye on over the uh, coming weeks and months, and however long this testing really does take. And, uh, hoping that we can eventually see the CMU researchers really get their credit for putting together uh, this new and more efficient test. Matt, as always, thank you so much for joining us on the live desk. If you haven't checked it out, I do encourage you to do so. If you're watching us on Facebook, you can find a link to it right now in the description box and comment section below. Matt, as always, thank you so much for being here. Anytime. Have a good one. Mm -hmm. Yep, and I hope everybody else has a very good day. Thank you so much for tuning into this latest edition of the Wood TV Live Desk. I'm Phil Panarski, and we hope you have a great rest of your day and weekend.